close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to breathe in a way that feels good, all the way in, all the way out. It's good to start with a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths, and then adjust things to see what feels just right. And see if you can stay there and get a sense of pleasure and a sense of refreshment from the breath. Because here it is, an opportunity to find some pleasure and some happiness, some well-being right here. It doesn't cost any money. You don't have to buy it from anybody. You don't have to take it from anybody. As the Buddha said, it's a perfectly blameless happiness, and it makes the mind clear. It's not like other forms of pleasure in the world, which tend to get the mind all muddy. When the mind is here, it's clear. It has this good sense of well-being. It can see things a lot more clearly for what they actually are. So try to stay here. And if your mind wanders off, ask yourself, where are you going? What trouble are you trying to look for? Because often that's what happens when the mind leaves the breath, when it leaves the Dharma. It's looking for trouble. It may not intentionally think that way, but it's going to stir things up. It's usually because it's not getting any satisfaction right here, right now, so it's looking for someplace else where it might get some satisfaction. So try to breathe in a way that feels really satisfying. And think about how good it is that the mind can find a happiness like this. Because otherwise, so much of the happiness, so much of the pleasure we find in the world requires conflict. You gain something, somebody else loses it. They gain, you lose. And there's never enough for anybody. As the Buddha once said, even if it rained gold coins, it wouldn't be enough for everybody's pleasures. So it's best that we look inside, where there's no need for conflict. And you're wandering away from this, this good source of happiness, okay, you, the mind is looking for trouble. In fact, this is one of the general principles of the Buddha's teachings. We look for happiness in terms of generosity, we look for happiness in terms of virtue, in terms of developing good qualities in the mind. And if we're looking for happiness someplace else, we're looking for trouble. And this is one of the reasons why the world doesn't have any peace, because nobody's looking for happiness, or very few people are looking for happiness inside, they're looking for it outside. There's going to be constant struggle, constant strife. But we don't have to struggle and strive along with them. We can find a happiness inside. As the Buddha says, we live in a world where people are arguing, but we don't have to argue with them when people are, are hungry for pleasures. But we don't have to be hungry for those kind of pleasures. We've got something better inside. We've got the fullness. We've got the rapture that can come, the refreshment that comes from staying with the Dharma. And that's our guide. That's our guidepost. This is what brings us all together. Here we are, people of lots of different nationalities, lots of different languages. But what brings us together is the fact that we all see the goodness of the Dharma and we want to give ourselves over to the Dharma. This is what unites our hearts. This is why we've been able to build this monastery. No one person could do it alone. A lot of people had to help. It's because we see that it's not just for the sake of any one particular person, it's for the sake of the Dharma. We have our respect for John Sawat, but again, why do we respect him? Is it because he respected the Dharma. So have respect for the Dharma, and that's what pulls people together, that holds people together. That's how we can live together in peace. They're talking about peace and goodwill for everybody. Every year at this time of year they talk about peace and goodwill. Well, we, this is something we work on all year round, by giving ourselves over to the Dharma, seeing that this is what pulls us together, brings us together, so that each person finds genuine satisfaction. It's not like other things where people band together and one person gains a little bit of this, another person gains a little bit of that, and nobody gains any real satisfaction. But here we're looking for satisfaction of the Dharma. It's op open to us. Gen the opportunities for generosity are here, the opportunities for virtue, the opportunities for meditation, they're all here. And this, we avail ourselves of them. Okay, we become part of a larger movement, the movement that's been going ever since the time of the Buddha himself. Because after all, we respect the Buddha. Who did he respect? He respected the Dharma. And this has been passed on from generation to generation. This is why there's still goodness in the world, is our respect for things that are more than just our own opinions, and more just than the opinions of the society around us. We see the genuine goodness of the Dharma. This is what holds us together, both inside and as a group. So try to maintain that respect for the Dharma, not only while you're here at the monastery, but as you go through life, because that's what provides true happiness, a happiness that doesn't stir up any trouble, happiness that brings peace to you and to the world around you.